Welcome to episode 221 of the Parkrun Adventurers podcast. My name is Melissa Ellis and I'm joined by the man in need of entry-level parkrun challenges, Ollie Spake. What volunteering tales from Killer Lee do you have for us this week, Ollie? <laughs> Hello, Mel. Hello, everyone. And yeah, I suppose I do have some more volunteering tales from Killer Lee. So look, thanks for asking. This week at Park Run, I barcode scanned again, and I, I think I did a much worse job this week at actually learning people's names, so I kind of missed the point of one of my favourite roles, but yeah, I still got to take it all in. We still got another new run director putting their stamp on our Park Run and the joy of, of welcoming new Park Runners, uh, some which were familiar but not in a Park Run theme for me, and some were actually international park runners. So that was pretty cool. Oh, tell us about the internationals. Okay, well, we do have, so this is a pair of park runners who've returned from Costa Rica of all places. Oh. And uh, one of them is one of our, our Shell Harbour Park Run family. And she's been overseas for a couple of years. Her parents have park run with us throughout that period, but she's returned with her partner. And they've been running glaciers and mountains and all sorts of crazy things over in North America and then in, in Costa Rica and finally finished their quarantine, passed their tests, and first thing on the agenda was Shell Harbour Park Run. Oh, very good. Well, I mean, that's a bit of a stretch. They got out on the Thursday, but, hey, you know, <laughs> we can pretend. <laughs> You've been a bit of a celebrity this last week in Park Run circles. Have I heard that You've been on local radio. Is it in Wollongong? Look, that's a bit of a stretch to call it celebrityism. I think you know, <laughs> Parkrun Adventures podcasting is celebrityism, right? Oh, of course, yes. Mm. But yes, yes, our local radio station has taken a very active interest in Shell Harbour Parkrun in promoting their own fitness promotions. And we had the pleasure of a couple of radio interviews across the course of the week. They promised to send some of their crew out. So we got, of all people, Australian Idol winner, Damien Leith. That's pretty awesome. Now, did you interview him? Um, I failed to record any interview with Damien, unfortunately. He, he interviewed me, um, so I probably should have taken that as a bit of a trade, really. But whoops. One job. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm going to, oh, I don't know. I'm going to give up on you. <laughs> <laughs> so are these the entry-level parkrun challenges we're talking about? Oh. Entry-level parkrun adventurer challenges, which I, I don't seem to have had. I mean, I didn't want to mention, but somehow I've, I've managed to uh, Chris Fraser, find myself where are amongst you? You need to step esteemed up, mate. company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. All right, all right. Well, you were busy. I guess you had important park run jobs to do and your event director and everything, so I'll cut you some slack. You you forgot about your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I'm not a good multitasker. Oh, men. Mm. <laughs> okay, next time. Can you give me a heads up so I can give you the prompts and the mem? Because this is what I do with my husband because he doesn't remember stuff. So I have to be the person that so don't forget. Don't forget, so you need to give me the heads up on these things so that I can make sure you don't forget. Good point. Yeah, look, I'll try and do that. I think, uh, I think I've got some support here to, to keep me honest as well. So I'll, I'll recruit Hannah because she'll keep me honest as well. Yes, Hannah, we need your help. <laughs> Dad needs your help. <laughs> Apprentice Hannah, would she be a good co-host? <laughs> hey, she's got podcasting experience. She'd love to. Sure thing. Let's get her on, Holly. She, she'll remember much more. Uh, she can probably hear me right now too. So. Was she at Shell Harbour this week? She was at Shell Harbour. She's been attending Shell Harbour more in a supportive and volunteering capacity. But, hey, she's hatching parkrun plans as well. So, yeah. Very good to hear. And what about your weekend, Mel? I'm glad you asked, Ollie. My touring streak is over. Oh. <laughs> Not an achievement or record in sight this week due to work commitments. I slipped discreetly into event 348 at Westerfolds Park Run, which was very close to my work. The good news is I needed a 348 for my Wilson Index. Oh, perfect. It was meant to be. <laughs> 
I did not find any of my Westerfoldian friends at home, uh, which was probably a good thing as I had to eat and run as it would be. But Westerfolds does help me towards upping my P index as it was the fifth occasion that I've run there. Ah, how is your P index going? Oh, it's on seven. Excellent. Yep. Um, so I need to run Westerfolds another three times in my quest to gain a P index of eight. Anyway, uh, so after my run, so my, oh, my run was pretty average. Westerfolds got a hill, as you know, which is mm. I'm not very fit, so it wasn't a super quick time, which is arbitrary. doesn't matter what the time is. Anyway, as soon as I finished, I had to do a quick change into my uniform for work in the toilet block, which had me feeling a little bit like Superman, uh, and then off I dashed to work. Park run fresh. Oh, what other way? Fortunate for me, social distancing. <laughs> Yeah, that does help in that respect, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Have we ever profiled Westerfolds Park on the pod? I'm thinking no. Uh, look, with my memory like a sieve, I could be completely wrong, but I don't remember much about Westerfolds Park. I, I, I've seen it in the Strava maps. I've seen a few images, but I don't think we have. Let me enlighten you, Ollie. Okay. Westerfolds Park is situated beside the Yarra River in Templestowe on 120 hectares of parkland and it has six kilometres of sealed trails throughout the park and even a view of the rapids where people canoe. It's a dog-friendly park and it features an adventure playground, which is also, coincidentally, the start location of both the five-kilometre and the junior park runs. It's known for its hill, atop of which sits the Manor House, which was built in 1936. Now, after World War II, much of the surrounding land was subdivided, but due to being flood-prone, Westerfolds was not subdivided and was added to the Yarra Valley Parklands in 1977. Westerfolds has over 400 plant species, as well as parrots, cockatoos, kookaburras, waterbirds, bats, platypus, wombats, koalas, possums, echidnas, and eastern grey kangaroos. Now, the eastern grey kangaroos are probably what people are more familiar with seeing in the photos of Westerfolds Park. Mm, yep. So there you go. Thank you, Mel. I, I'll be honest, Westerfolds has long been on the list. I think hearing the name a few times over as, as an avid listener, it's been drummed into me that I need to get to Melbourne and I need to try Westerfolds. But, yeah, I was quite surprised there that I really didn't know much about it. And if I understand correctly, I may have heard it once or twice, they've even got their own running club. Oh, yes, they certainly absolutely do. And the course is a one-loop course. We do like the one-loop courses. Complete circuit. And I do enjoy being there. It feels like a little home away from home. So, Ollie, please come down with your lovely family and I'll meet you there and work on my P-Index. Excellent. That sounds like a plan. We'll have to lock in a park run visit one day. I'll speak to Hannah. Yes, speak to Hannah. And, <laughs> hey, speak to my sister too. She's even down there. She's been saying the exact same thing. Right. There's a movement, Mel. Okay, Operation, what can we call it? Operation Vic Spake Adventure. Oh, I like that. That's very military. Rolls off the tongue. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. Vic Spake Adventure. Excellent. Op Vic Spake Adventure. Can you hear me actually writing it down? I can hear. <laughs> it's real now. Look, this week I think we've heard from a few more roving reporters, Mel. So we, we did have a, a wonderful array last week and fortunately we've been able to hear from a few more. So let's have a listen. Alison here reporting in from my home park run of Pooring Park Run in New Zealand, where today I am run directing. Today is Waitangi Day, which is a national holiday in New Zealand to mark the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840. Now, the Treaty of Waitangi is considered to be New Zealand's founding document. And to celebrate, we're having a karakia this morning. So I hope to get that recorded as well as also catch up with some other park runners. But, you know, as run director, I kind of have another job to do, but I'll see what I can do. Hi, to Puranga Park Run. Uh, my name's Megan. I... Um, a new partner to the Tukwiti of Waitangi. I'm actually Australian, but I do karakia all the time at work with my tamariki, so I'm really excited to share um, our karakia timatanga, our opening karakia, and our himini with you this morning. Sorry about my croaky voice, but I will try and project. Okay. I'll, I'll be loud enough. Um, so I just ask you to put your hands together, please. 
Whakapiri a koutou, ringa ringa ka inai tātou. E te atua, manakitia mātou, mau tenei rā, amene. E hara e te mia, no anai nei a ti aroha. No na tūpuna, i tuku ihu, i tuku ihu, amene. Cut by everyone and ra marie, have a great day. Thank you. So I'm here with Megan, who did our karakia today. So Megan, um, can you tell us a bit about yourself and what Waitangi Day means to you? Um, kia ora everyone, my name's Megan. I'm Australian from Sydney originally, but living in Rotorua for the past two and a half years. So for me, um, I'm a kayako, which is a teacher. For me, like Waitangi Day is all about partnership. So just, you know, being a new partner to the Treaty of Waitangi, which was originally between um, the Maori people and the Crown or the Pākehā, like New Zealand Europeans, Um, and just as part of that, just welcoming everyone who's new to the country. We've got lots of new families at work who have moved to make New Zealand their home, so just being part of, yeah, the New Zealand whānau, the New Zealand family is really, really part of what I see Waitangi Day as. Were you a bit nervous during the karaoke at Parkrun? Um, I was a little bit. We do it at. I do it with my tamariki, with my with the children at work. So it's usually only like about a hand, like five or seven young children that will listen to me do it. So it was sort of a bit different doing it with adults, but it was quite nice um, when we did the song afterwards, the himini. Um, a few people recognised the song and joined in, so that that was quite good to. Yeah, just be able to share in something with everyone on our, the National New Zealand Day. Yeah. And you're a bit of a parkrun tourist, aren't you, yourself? Yes, yeah. Um, my husband and I have done quite a few of the park runs within New Zealand. Um, probably my favourite would have been Wanaka Park Run and Whanganui Park Run. Um, they're just, yeah, really nice. You're running along the lake in Wanaka and the... Uh, um, the river in Whanganui and yeah it's just really beautiful and everyone's always so friendly and they will get excited when you say that you're from Puranga Park Run and oh yeah well there's no sulphur flats here and um, just seeing all the amazing places within New Zealand that Park Run is fortunate enough to be able to access is just amazing. And your registered, your home park run is actually Parramatta, isn't it? Uh, yes, but I've actually never done it. Um, I only started park run when I moved to New Zealand. I signed up when um, I was still living in Australia before I got married and moved. So, yeah, I've, like, I've done the the course itself, but never actually as part of a park run. So when the borders are free and open again, I'm quite keen to go and do that one and, yeah, go see go see my home river again. Cool. So your top three would be what, Puranga, Whanganui and Wanaka? Yes. Yeah. 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 They're really nice. Cool. All right. Thanks so much. You're welcome. I'm with one of our visitors here today, Marie. Um, Welcome to Puranga, Marie. And let's hear a bit more about your parkrun story. Thank you. And thanks for an awesome run this morning. So I'm from Melbourne. I'm in New Zealand for three months at the moment. I had to do my two weeks of isolation. So every day I did three kilometres running round and round the isolation car park. Um, And I'm loving park run in New Zealand. I did the uh, Kapiti Park Run, which is just beautiful all along a river. And now today in Rotorua with all of the hot pools and steam. It's been a great day. Where's your home park run? Uh, So I'm from Melbourne. So the um, Albert Park Park Run is home for me. Yeah. And how does this one compare? <laughs> well, this is pretty spectacular, I have to say. Um, I've never run through geothermal activity before and the views of, of the lakes and all the buildings. It's it's stunning here in Rotorua. Cool. So if you had a top three of um, Melbourne or Australian events, what would they be? Oh, gosh, I'm a very, very new runner. Um, at the start of last year, I couldn't even run 50 metres. But um, during isolation, I'm very proud to be able to run 5K now. So I don't yet have a top three runs, but I'm looking forward to finding them. Oh, awesome. Cool. So thanks so much. You're and welcome. Good luck with all the rest of your parkrun tourism. Thank you so much. 
And that's a wrap on another successful park run. We had 108 finishes today, which was up on last week by about 24. Um, lots of smiles, lots of newbies. I'm stoked to have an overseas visitor. So that one, that really made my morning. But I have a message for you, Mel. Um, Puranga, i.e. the steamy, stinky park run, is about an hour and 20 minutes away from University of Waikato. So you can come here to Rotorua, have a week exploring, um, um, seeing the sights, going to the spa, really having a good time, and then you can head over to Hamilton to get your you. As for um, the name for our countrymen, uh, Ollie, your pronunciation wasn't too bad, but I'm going to say Aotearoan, which is a play on the name Aotearoa, which is the Māori name for New Zealand. Anyway, that's it from me. I um, hope to catch you all again next week, and have a great week, everyone. G'day Parkrun Adventurers, it's Lyndall here and I'm checking in this morning for the Channel 5 News crew, adventuring not very far from home. This is not one of those days where I've gotten up at 3 o'clock, driven for a couple of hours to go somewhere new, but I am doing an adventuring milestone. Now, this milestone is celebrating consistency in adventuring and my friend Erica and I are at South Bank Parklands right in the middle of Brisbane City. Today we are upgrading our P index to Double O seven license to kill <laughs> So here we are we are looking awesome Erica has made us these beautiful fantastic James Bond tuxedo shirts We've got our spy pistols ready to go, so watch out, everybody. Erica, how are you feeling today? Excited. It's going to be done. We've been waiting for this for a while, trying to match it up so we can both get to seven together, and here we finally are. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> happening. It's happening. All righty. I'm just hoping that by the end of this that we are not shaken or stirred. Let's see how we go, and we'll check in later. Alrighty, adventurers, I am here with some first time ever park runners. What's your name? Uh, Laura. Anna. Rita. And I am hearing some accents. You guys are not from around here. No, I'm from Canada. Uh, I'm a New Zealander. Spain. And have, so first park run ever, you've never park run at home? Yeah, that's correct. No, I have not. Yes, first experience. Now, you had never heard of park run before your run this morning, is that correct? This is correct. I just went for a run alone and I found you and I, <laughs> I just joined you. <laughs> it, you just look so much fun. Wow, definitely. I'm going to come back uh, every weekend, yes. <laughs> oh, awesome. You'll have to. If you just live in the city... Yes, definitely. This is amazing. Perfect. Now, what has brought you to Australia in the first place? Um, I'm studying my PhD at the University of Queensland. Okay, and? I'm also studying my PhD at UQ. And? I am I study a yoga teaching course. And please tell me one of you is studying at QUT. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I work at QUT. You're all going to the wrong place to study. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's great. Now that's okay. So you've come here to study. How's the experience being in Brisbane? And are you coming back to Park One again? Um, it's fabulous. I'm, it's wonderful to be able to be out here with everybody back in my country. Park Run's not really going on right now. Everybody's yeah. locked down. So yeah. feeling really fortunate, really privileged to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's that like being so far from home in a pandemic? Not great. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> I'm glad that you can be here yeah. because you're right, it is a lovely place to be and it we is. are very, very so thankful. Privileged. Yeah, we're all of us in Australia are so thankful and grateful for where we are and that we are here. We've all got friends and family overseas, so we all know. So hugs to you and your family Thank on you. behalf Thank of you. everyone on Park Run. Okay, now, where are you going next week? Are you adventuring or are you going to come back to South Bank? And next week I have uh, some work in yes. the in Super's Paradise. Yes. But the next weekend I will I will come back here for yes. run with you. Definitely. Make sure that you register so that you've got a barcode and you can scan in. I'll show you about that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> um, next weekend I'm camping, but I'm gonna be here the weekend after. Perfect. And I've got to work. I'm a I'm a fortnightly runner, so I'll be back here in two weeks or <laughs> two on St. Lucia's. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> awesome. I'll do, I'll, do, I'll do a virtual, a virtual one next week. Social distance. Social distance. Oh. Perfect. All right. Well, ladies, thank you so much for talking to me. Welcome to Parkland. I'm glad that you've had a really great experience and you can enjoy the sunshine here in Brisbane. And I hope that you continue to enjoy being here and keep on park running. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> Alrighty, now I am checking in with Matt and Jody. Jody, you are wrangling volunteers here today. Yes, we are always very grateful to have our volunteers come and help us put on our event here at South Bank. And luckily we have a lot of nice people who step up and help us out. Fantastic. Now it looks like you need quite a lot of volunteers on course. Yes, we have uh, nine people, I believe, out on course, plus all our people here at the finish line. I think we clock in just over 20, about 21, 22 volunteers total for our event every Saturday. So I can see why Volunteer Wrangler is an official volunteer role here at South Bank, even though it's a big big park run here, isn't it? Yeah, we, have a, we average around about 550 to 600 every week. We're the biggest in Australia any given week. Um, sometimes Rocks beats us, sometimes Newey beats us, but usually South Bank, any given week would be roughly around the biggest in Australia. So if you get about 600 people, you need 20 volunteers. We only need 3% of people to volunteer, but really grabbing that 3% each week makes it really difficult. So They are great stats, 3%. <laughs> I have worked it out before in the past. It didn't just roll off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, I, the other thing I noticed, all the volunteers wear little name tags out on course. What a nice touch. Yeah, we uh, think it gives our volunteers a good personal touch and um, it's really surprising when you're standing out on the course, the amount of runners and walkers that take the time to read your name tag along the way and thank you for volunteering. Yeah, I tried to do that. I didn't get everyone, but I did try to thank everyone by name today. It's mostly because I can't remember these names. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Having the name tags on is really for my benefit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I am interviewing you for the Park One Adventurers. What kind of adventuring have you guys done? We love to travel. So Jenny and I, every year, will at least do, well, before COVID, <laughs> do at least one big trip and we'll always try and hit up a park run if we can to do there. So we've been to um, places in Africa. We've been to places in England. We've tried to get to the US, but we haven't been able to find a park run in the US. But wherever we like to travel, we always try and hit a park run. And if we don't hit it on the day, we'll try and at least do the course so that we can say that we have been there and done the course. Yes, fantastic. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. Can you name a top three that doesn't include your park run? home my favorite is probably Manipi here in Brisbane um, that's because it's my fastest park run yeah. um, it's flat and it's fast and it's easy so really enjoy Manipi yeah what about you Jody? is there a standout for you uh, one of my favorites is Kamei in Sydney it's a little park run in the botany area that a lot of people probably don't know about that you run along the foreshore and um, one of our friends is one of the run directors down there so every time we're in Sydney that's where we frequent and it's a nice little park run Right, there you go. Hidden treasure for all the adventurers out there. Fantastic. All right, well, I better let you get back to your duties. Thank you so much for talking to me today and good luck finding your 3%. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, so now I am here with today's run director, Ross. Ross, it took a bit of arm twisting to get you to talk to me. You're a pretty shy kind of guy, I reckon. Very shy, very shy. I don't like to talk at all. <laughs> now, I was taken by your run briefing this morning. A bit of fun there? I, I love the briefing because uh, I think it's time to get everybody energised, ready for the run. And I was very impressed with your outside voice. Yes, I have a very quiet voice, <laughs> which goes along with my shyness. So... Uh, and at South Bank here, you know, we've got people that like to line up amongst the trees, so I like to pull them in from under the trees like the koalas and get them in ready for the briefing. <laughs> koalas, do you have to wake them and prod them as well? No, they're already awake. I just have to prod them. <laughs> Excellent. Well, under your guidance, you've had quite a few runners here today. There's a big park run here at South Bank, isn't it? Yeah, we've, um, we get probably five or 600 every week. I think we've got probably going to be 600 this week, and we're just under 1,000 for our Christmas Day record. All righty. Now, Christmas Day, with no Christmas Day park run this last year at South Bank, that was a bit of a sad occasion for all of us. But things happen, and we understand that you can't always volunteer all the time. Big volunteer field here to coordinate on a weekly basis, including yourself. What is your story, Ross? How did you get involved with park run? Um, and, you know, running, volunteering, whatever you'd like to tell me about. Sure. Um, had knee surgery for my 50th birthday, happy 50 to me, so I could get back to running and walking through South Bank in recovery saw the parkrun sign. So talked to two gentlemen named Reese 
Anderson and Murray Skilling, and they were the guys in charge that day, and they were just so lovely that I actually asked to volunteer with them while I was injured and then joined their team. And that was nine years ago, and I've been a run director for seven years and just absolutely love uh, the experience of the community, I think, giving back and, and taking from the community and seeing all those other people that want to do it as well. Fantastic. So that would have been, you would have seen a lot of volunteers in your time? Uh, I've seen hundreds of volunteers um, and and lots of teams of RDs as well. We have five teams of run directors here and um, seeing lots of teams come and go and people giving to the community for a few years and coming back. So absolutely loving it. Fantastic. Now, did you get back to running? I am a mad runner again. Um, and <laughs> doing uh, a lot of trail running at the moment So and entering my first ultra marathon in April. In April, which one would that be? Doing the Dead Cow Gully Ultra, which is last man standing. So, it, oh, Well, I might see it. How many laps do you reckon you're going to do, Ross? Uh, uh, I don't want to put it out there, but I'd, I'd like to crack the 100k yep. and see how we go after that. That'll put me into night time. I think that'll be fun. And uh, we'll see where we go. But I don't think I'll be getting up to the winner last year, 2019, that did 465 kilometres. Yes. Oh, I think that takes a very special talent. Uh, special is a inverted commas word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I- interesting character, I would say. Yeah. All right, now park running. Have you done much adventuring in your park running um, career? Yeah, we, we're really big into park run tourism here. And as the RDs, we used to go out to different park runs as groups. Um, so probably 40-ish or so and lots overseas in the States and New Zealand and places like that. So uh, we, my wife and I, actually, when we go on holidays, are looking where park runs are and we, we tend to maybe book accommodation around <laughs> park runs. It has been done and we may have left on holidays at 2 in the morning just to get to Yamber in time for the park run oh, on the way it. down south. So, <laughs> so, yes, we may or may not be a little bit addicted, yes. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. Have you got a top three park runs, not including your home one here at South Bank? Um, the one in Rotorua, I can't remember the name. It's a Maori name, Pukaroanga or something like that. It's fascinating because you run amongst the mud pools and the steam. It is, and they say stick to the track, and there's a good reason for that. Yep. Um, Washington, D.C., um, on Roosevelt Island, so it's a national park and you walk on a bridge over to the island. There's no vehicles there, and you run around the island. And the run briefing says when you're on the boardwalk, look out for deer jumping the boardwalk, and please don't trip over turtles. So that's that's probably a, a, a great <laughs> one as well. Number three, uh, I think Orlando, uh, because you run around a little lake, and when we did it, there were two guys with our shirts on that were leading, and the run director said, don't follow them at halfway. Uh, apparently they're triathletes and they dived into the water and did some swim <laughs> and we said why not because it looks nice and cool and they said because there's gators in the lake so yeah. probably you know for the three interesting ones those would be them yeah. Yeah. that is quite a story well there we go adventurers some uh highlights for your um adventuring spreadsheet now ross you sort of said to me beforehand that you're sailing off into the sunset and that you're hanging up the run directing boots yeah, I had kind of aimed to do my 100th volunteer with my 250th run at the same time because I'd be tailing Charlie. But COVID kind of put a, a stick to that. It means that's two years away. So I've decided I just want to concentrate on getting my 250, yeah. which I'll do. And then I've met, I'm about 80 volunteers. And then I'll come back and, and do my other 20 volunteers and hit yeah. the 100 as well. And, and then, but, but come along just in lots of different park runs. So I'd like to volunteer in lots of different park runs because I run a lot of different park runs. Yeah. Give back to different communities, I think. Do some volunteering. Exactly, volunteering is, I love it. I'm going to use that word now. Yes. All right, well, Ross, thank you so much. Enjoy running for a little while and touring for a little while, and thank you for the contribution that you've made here um, to South Bank Park Run. Park, uh, South Bank Park Run. run. Whew, I'm a bit out of practice at these roving reports, listeners. Jeez, I better get back on the wagon. All righty, thank you, Ross, for all everything that you've done. Enjoy touring, and um, we'll talk to you another time. Thanks, Linda. Lovely to see you in your 007 outfit today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for noticing. We, yeah. um, we've put a lot of thought into it, actually. Oh, I can tell, yeah, yeah. The gun was a giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Parkrun Adventurers, I think that's a wrap from South Bank. 
I, as you can tell, I'm a bit tongue-tied. I'm a bit out of practice with my roving report, so I might have to start adventuring again and getting back on it. But what a lovely day. I'm licensed to kill now with my good friend Erica. Um, let's see where we can go to get our um, P index to eight. All right, this is Lyndall over and out from Southbank Park Run for the Channel 5 News Crew. Morning adventurers, it's the Quizmaster reporting in from Cow Pasture Camden, where I've just done my 50th different event, or my cow, so the synchronicity has not been lost on me. On the way in here, I drove past the movies. Cow Pasture is an amazing course, it's uh, a little undulating, it's covered by trees at the start. They do a countdown to start you off, as they always do. Um, yeah, as I say, an excellent team. I've got really sore calves after doing it, and I'm utterly exhausted. Um, if you come out to Camden, make sure you put cow pasture on your list. All right, I'll speak to you later. I'm heading off for breakfast. I'll probably have some muesli. And we had Alison back again from Paringa on Why Tangy Day. So I'm loving this, Ollie. I am loving learning about New Zealand. This is their uh, their national day that they celebrate and she interviewed Megan who did the karakia, I think is how it's pronounced, which is the prayer to start the day. That was really wonderful. And two mm. of the interviews that Alison did were Australians over there living the life in New Zealand. Yeah, so jealous. <laughs> That was great to hear. Great to hear directly from Puringa. We're getting a little rapport over there with Puringa. I'm starting to feel like it's my home away from home. Home we can visit soon, I hope, whenever it's possible anyway. But it was a really nice way to, to start the Park Run day and to, to mark the date. So well done, Alison and everyone there at Puringa. And Marie, is home Park Run is Albert, Melbourne, where our very own Scott Watkins is from. Yes, how about that? So many connections. It's nice to hear some some very familiar voices there. I certainly couldn't get over Megan and her home park run. Oh, Parramatta, that she hasn't yes. been able to run yet. Home of the world female record recently. That's right. The very, very fast Parramatta park run. And I can, I can tell that Megan's looking forward to getting over there one day. Now that it's famous. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe before it was famous. And Thank you, Alison, for letting me know that Paringa is only one hour and 20 minutes from the University of Waikato and that it is completely doable, way under the six and a quarter hours that I'm used to having to travel. So, yay, holiday is getting, uh, coming together nicely. Yeah, that New Zealand list is building. I would dearly love to uh, to pursue the club, uh, which I'm going to try and pronounce now. I've had, had the guidance. So thank you very much also, Alison, for the uh, Alta Rowan club and if i butchered that again i'm truly sorry i am a slow learner i'm sure that's how you said it last week <laughs> <laughs> shows that i don't learn this is not any difference ollie yeah but i think that's a great term love it and yeah it's been good to good to have that feedback too so thanks allison it's been nice to have a hat trick of reports from you i did think though ollie the previous podcast we did say we would do a poll about mm. the term and then allison's come back with one option and we've gone yeah great we'll take that and forgot completely about our poll missing some poll opportunities okay noted bit too eager you think mel <laughs> yeah. well it was a good option though it was look happy to put it out for a vote particularly if we've got some new zealand listeners that would give us some other interesting insights so yeah why not maybe we should give it another week yep for engagement and then if nobody comes back, then we'll call it. Okay. All right. And how nice was it to hear from Lyndall? Great to have you back on the wagon, Lyndall. And I have to say, is there anything you don't do in style? That was, uh, that was a remarkable get-up for the 007 day. Spy pistols for a P. <laughs> <laughs> a P index. That's right. And well done for not getting pulled up and interrogated by the police, taking a pistol to park run. Yeah, it was fantastic to hear some of the the different interviews there. One thing I did pick up is that Lindell's interviews there really picked out some interesting and danger-themed park runs. 
in the top three. I think Ross, the the run director, real has a real appetite. So I don't know whether it was the uh, the double oh seven get up that just brought out the the danger in everyone, but alligators and obviously a mention of Puerenga there. Yeah, there was a real appetite for risk. You see, Ollie, all I heard out of R.D. Ross's interview was that he had a good outside voice. That's what came across to me. I was very impressed. Yeah, which is very helpful as an R.D. Definitely. And we had some audio from Simon, our Parkrun Adventurer's very own quiz master, who was at Cow Pasture Reserve completing his cow. How fitting. <laughs> We've got the sound effects, Mel. I know. I'm on it, Ollie. Excellent. <laughs> oh, thank you, Simon, for giving us perfect opportunity to debut the new sound effects. And thank you, Simon. <laughs> Congratulations on your milestone. Yeah, well done. One final observation on the roving reports, though, Mel, is, uh, and sorry to harp on about New Zealand, is Perenga's getting a few mentions. So, um, of the lists of not yet done park runs, as far as my list goes anyway, it's it's shooting to the top. It's nice hearing some of these other options, but uh, that one, that one I've really got to try. I thought you were going to say something along the lines of Peringa's getting so many mentions, they're going to get banned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one can get mentioned more than Shell Harper now. Uh Great to hear. Thank you, everyone, for the roving reports. And look, thank you also to the informant who has sent in another report. Mel, let's have a listen. This is the informant. These are unofficial stats. They may differ from the stats you read elsewhere. They are only current at the time they are collected with a 100% chance of an error from time to time. There were five event launches worldwide this week. In New South Wales, there were four, which were all supposed to launch mid last year before the COVID shutdowns cancelled them all. Kajula Parklands, North Parks Oval, Pioneer Dairy at Tugra, and Ted Scurvy Oval in Griffith. In Queensland, we had came to Riverwalk. Out of 459 runners who took part in these events, there were 124 who scanned a barcode for the first time, and another 46 unknown runners. This week, 418 events ran worldwide. We had 384 events run in Australia and New Zealand, with the remainder taking place in Japan, Russia, and remote UK territories. Down under, we had 50,798 runners, which is down around 3,500 on last week. However, those that did run, ran hard. There was a post-COVID record of 7,113 PBs, which is 268 higher than last week. 3,045 people in Australia and New Zealand participated for the first time. 249 reached their 50 milestone, 112 reached their 100 milestone, and a post-COVID record of 29 people reached their 250 milestone. For the ACT, we have one new statesperson in John Woolard who ran at Dundarlan. In the Northern Territory, we had Edithia Pathania at Darwin, Bronte Bellet and Sinisa Bogdanovich at Palmerston and Tracy Lakey at Knifecliffe. In Victoria, we had Chantel Hosking, Rihanna Wick Campbell, Cheryl Smith, Path and Irene Bomaganti, regaining statesmanship once again at Fair Park Reserve. Over in New Zealand, we had Warwick Smith, Julie and Paul Gordon, who became North Islanders and New Zealand countrymen at Trenton Memorial. Sarah Jansha became North Islander at Gisborne. Over on our most Aussie New Zealand events list, Amanda O'Reilly, Mill Clayton, Emily Steele jumped from ranking 223 up to 214. The biggest mover of the week is Kay Fam, who has jumped 11 spots up to 179th after running at Warner Lakes. In the top 20, Kevin Muller moves to equal 17 up from 19 at Gainsborough Greens. Jan Bigham moves to equal 15th at Gainda Riverwalk. Tony Jennings continues his move up the ladder, now on 13th after also completing Game to River. This has been The Informant, and my spreadsheet is bigger than yours. More great facts from The Informant this week, and especially super 
Saturday launch in New South Wales, Ollie. We had Kajula Parklands, North Parks Oval, Pioneer Dairy at Tuggera, and Ted Scobie Oval in Griffith. Griffith. <laughs> I can't say that word. All launch. All those events were supposed to launch prior to the pause. There was a big event going on across New South Wales this week. And are any of those close to you, Ollie? Well, Somewhat close. <laughs> but I mean, how wonderful is it to see you know, all those events launching? Look, the nearest one to me is Kazula or Kazula Parklands, I should say, uh, which does make it into my list of 10 closest park runs. I think that one is 100 k's away. Oh. So that, that's pretty close in your terms, right, Mel? That's practically next door. Yeah. <laughs> the others the others I'd be clocking up some similar case to some of your um your regular adventures there but that look they sound like wonderful locations uh having seen a couple of the pictures out there they look like some pretty good park runs. Oh, didn't Ted Scobie Oval look fabulous? I saw those photos that Chris Fraser posted. Very impressed with the uh landscape over there looking very lush but some Beautiful outlooks. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that one. So any plans, Mel? Well, once I <laughs> once I knock off the couple of Victorian events that I've fallen behind on, Ted Scobie Oval will become my Nendi at 476 kilometres away. See, I would have expected that to be further, but that, that's my geography failing there, isn't it? So that sounds doable. It's a big one. Yes, it's only five and a half hours. <laughs> okay. Oh. I could just get up early and do that one. Knock it over in the morning. <laughs> no, but I really am looking forward to planning that one into my future events. I would love to to visit Kazula Park, right? Park Lands. Gee, there we go. Uh, Kazula Park Lands before too, too long. <laughs> Handy location. And, yeah, really no excuse. And you know how excited I am about it, Ollie? This is how excited. <laughs> <laughs> I've discovered a sound effect app. You might have noticed the moo earlier. The moo. Yeah, no, I figured that wasn't that wasn't Chico in the background. <laughs> Look, my reaction would be the same in terms of my excitement, but I don't have the sound effect app, so I'm going to rely on you to uh, <laughs> you to produce whatever my reaction is. I'm loving it. <laughs> oh, well, and now Chico's out of a job. Those um <laughs> Drum rolls won't be needed. But this is my favourite. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, can, I could see the interest there. Yep. Way back when mobile phones were but young, I used to have this little Nokia phone that I could have download ringtones and I would yep. have the different ringtone for different people that messaged me regularly and that that was one of my ringtones and it was so sad like you know because you get a new phone and then you lose all that stuff uh so that's make that's going to make a comeback now will, will it so you'll have the the bugle or the trumpet sorry mel which one is it bugle trumpet i think it's a bugle i'm going to say bugle. It's a bugle because you yeah. know the military thing but i like this one too ollie listen no boogers <laughs> what's that from that sounds familiar <laughs> but i can't remember what it's from Got nothing? Not sure on that one. <laughs> Got, nothing. Got nothing. Got nothing. Oh, okay. You disgust me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see these are going to, these are really going to, uh, yeah, help product. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I digress. I'll stop now. I've got to find some way to insert my um, sound effects. Ah, uh, yes. Anyway, <laughs> what have we got coming up next week, Ollie? Next week, well, it is getting rather close to Palm, to the Park Run Adventures listeners meetup, which we did rather hopefully announce at the beginning of the year when we got the keys. And look, we're, we're still really excited. We're still looking forward to that. And for those that haven't caught that particular podcast or haven't heard the memo, we are having a Park Run Adventures listeners meetup in April. So the weekend being the... Friday the 16th, I think is right, Mel. Park Run Day the 17th and Sunday the 18th of April on the Sunshine Coast. That is correct. And next week we are going to have the one and only Mr. Tock joining us to talk everything 
palm related. Yes. And for anyone that hasn't seen it already, please do check out our page. We've got the link there to point you to the listener meetup page. And should you be in a position to join us or should you want to join the fun remotely, of course, you know, that'll have all the important prompts around remembering to pack your ugly Christmas singlet and any questions that we want your feedback on as well of course look forward to chatting to talk and hearing much much more about that next week yes ollie and we're gonna see how we can incorporate a poll possibly yes. for some feedback on what you might like the theme to be for our fabulous famous friday night dress up is it Friday night, Mel? Oh, don't tell me it's Saturday night. Have I got it wrong? That doesn't work with <laughs> fabulous Friday. That doesn't rhyme. Oh, okay. Fabulous. Oh, sensational Saturday. Okay, let's go with that. Sensational Saturday. <laughs> hey, look, you know, that could be the poll in itself. But no, that's a very important matter to get feedback on. Heading to the Sunshine Coast, uh, we do have some some very high standards to meet in that neck of the woods when it comes to fancy dress and outfits. So, yeah, we, we need all the input we can get to get this one right. Okay, who wants to vote for Wizard of Oz theme? My hands up. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was, I was thinking, I mean, there are some pretty famous features around the Sunshine Coast there, but the wildlife, maybe there's an animal theme. Right. As hard as that might be. See, I thought you were going to go the pineapple, the fruit theme. Pineapple. We're all going to be dressing as pineapples. Well, we've seen some pineapples before. I think that would work. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She says as she scours for a, a appropriate sound effect. That's a bowling strike. My gosh, I was wondering what was happening in the background there, Mel. It really worked, did it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And I probably can't edit that out. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Adds to production value. I think a strike is it. The good strike, the, the actual bowling strike. Because I think uh, I think the pineapple theme could be a winner, personally. Either than that, or we're all dressing in bowling costumes, and we're going to actually go bowling. Yes. Hey, it's something we haven't tried. Why not? Oh, we haven't done it. Palm bowling yes. night. Ooh. Yeah. There we are. Well, we're going to have to listen to talk, find out, and anything else to be resolved. Look out for those polls. You also mentioned next week, Mel. Do you have any plans for next week? I'm going adventuring. Back on the road. Yes, I am back on the road. On the road again. I will be – I'm not going to tell you. You can find out next week. Okay. What about you? It's going to get this way a bit now, isn't it? No, I'm not going to tell you either. <laughs> <laughs> I can guess. Anyway, are we? it's not like we all don't know where you'll be. I may or may not be at <laughs> Shell Harbour. One day you'll surprise me. <laughs> One day I will. One day I will. I look forward to that. Hey, look, it's coming. It's coming. I've got, uh, I think I mentioned her before, I've got the instigator in the family who keeps speaking into my ear and feeding me ideas. And Is that Galen or is that Hannah? Yeah, look, mum's certainly had a couple of suggestions, but, you know, it hasn't been quite on the, the parkrun bandwagon as much lately. She's she's been pretty flat out, but Hannah, yes, Hannah's, um, Hannah's talking up some parkrun tourism. Excellent. Yep, I think we're going to have to harness that enthusiasm. Yeah, I mean, gee, Ollie, you've got a child that actually wants to go park running. That's just a milestone in itself. Yes, yes, they do go through phases, don't they? I'm going everywhere solo at the moment. So any chance of Zoe joining you this weekend? Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> but she, yeah, she came to juniors, so... I made her, but excellent. She came to juniors. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. Um, so we should mention again, Ollie, our email address, just in case, on the off chance somebody sends us an email. Please <laughs> feel free, parkrunadventurers at gmail dot com. Yes, and hey, especially if if I don't work out how to actually launch a poll on Facebook, send us emails, guys. Send us yeah, send us suggestions. Definitely love to hear from everyone and. Well, I suppose if there's anything you want to hear on the pod, please do drop us a line. Well, I think we're still driving with the pea plates, but happy to take some suggestions. Desperate for content? <laughs> <laughs> Was I that clear? <laughs> 
No, we're doing okay, Ollie, I reckon. We fill in an hour every week. That's right. And if three of you listeners tell us we are, that's a majority and we're happy. <laughs> yep, plan it for those three. I thought it was five. Have we lost a couple? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was I was thinking, well, a three out of five, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A couple might be a couple of episodes behind. That's right. That's mm. right. Certainly am looking forward to next week and very much looking forward to hearing about the Listener Meetup. But in the meantime, Mel, I suppose that's it. It is. We will catch you all next week.